everybody and welcome to another virtual field trip from the Detroit Children's Museum. I would like to welcome you to the Huron County Nature Center up here in Michigan's Thumb. Today I'd like to read to you the legend of the lady slipper. It's an Ojibwe legend about this quirky little flower from around here called the lady slipper. So please enjoy the reading of The Legend of the Lady Slipper, an Ojibwe tale retold by Lise Lung Larson and Margie Pruce, illustrated by Andrea Arroyo. After the snow has melted in the northern forests, you may chance upon graceful flowers shaped like tiny moccasins. Some are yellow and some are white. Some are pink. Some are both pink and white. All are lady slippers, the most rare and precious flowers of the north. This delicate plant grows from the soggy ground of a black spruce bog or the rocky soil of a jack pine forest. It takes 14 years before the first bloom appears. If left undisturbed, it will grow into a thick cluster of flowers which bloom for another hundred years or more. However, if any part of the lady slipper is picked, the entire plant dies. How did such a delicate flower come to grow in such rugged country? This Ojibwe legend will tell you. Once there was a young girl who lived with her mother and father, sister and brother, aunts and uncles, her many cousins, her grandfathers and grandmothers, and all of her people in a village among the whispering pines. Of all her family, her older brother was her favorite. He was as strong as a bear, as fast as a rabbit, and as smart as a fox. Because of these traits, he was the messenger for the village. When he went on his journeys, the little girl begged to go along with him, but all he would say was, maybe tomorrow. Then one day, a terrible disease struck. The little girl watched as one by one, her people became ill. Her grandparents, her aunts and uncles, her sister, her mother, even her father fell ill. A neighboring village had the mashkiki, the healing herbs they needed. But the journey was too dangerous to make in the winter. It was too cold, the snow was too heavy, and between the villages lay a deep, dark lake covered with groaning ice. Such journeys were not made in the Gichi Manido Gizis, the great spirit moon. Still, her brother said, yes, he would make the trip. But then, even he became ill. Now the little girl thought, surely there was no one else to go unless she herself were to make the journey. Maybe tomorrow, she thought. But looking at her brother, his face bright with fever, she knew that she had to leave right away. She found her moccasins, the beautiful beaded moccasins her mother had made out of deerskin and tucked warm rabbit fur inside them. Then she slipped them on and stepped out into the raging storm. Trees lashed about in the wind, rattling their branches, falling snow stung her face. Mashkawizin, it hissed. Be strong. The little girl bent her head and stalked like a bear into the storm. The snow tugged at her, but she charged through it, plunging into the wind. Mashkawizin. All day she walked until, at dusk, she stood before a windswept lake. The slick ice lay as if asleep, silent. On the far shore, the wigwams of the other village glowed warmly. The little girl stepped out onto the frozen lake, and the ice shuddered and woke. Dada Tabin, it rumbled. Go quickly. So the girl ran like a rabbit, skittering and slipping. 
Da da ta bean. When she reached the other side, all the people rushed out to meet her. She told them her story, and when she finished, she saw their faces glowing with admiration. Then an old woman swept her up and carried her into a lodge. She fed the little girl roasted venison and warm tea. She tucked her in with soft robes. The little girl was almost asleep when she remembered the medicines. The mashkiki, she murmured. We will bring you and the mashkiki to your people, the old woman whispered. Tomorrow. It is too dark and too cold to travel tonight. But when the little girl closed her eyes, she saw the sad, pale faces of her family, her friends, and her brother. She knew she must leave right away. She rose quietly, gathered up the medicine bundle, and crept out. The storm had stopped. Now all was deep, cold, and silence, except the popping and cracking of the trees. Her eyes stung. She felt the frost gather on her cheeks. She pulled her robe tight and hurried across the lake. Blue and green lights flickered in the sky. She knew the lights were the spirits of the dead, gaily dressed, rising and falling in the steps of a dance. Jiba yeg ni mi weg, her people called them the northern lights. Jiba yeg ni mi weg. What if someone from her family or one of her people were to join them because she had been so slow? She left the lake and quickened her pace, keeping her eyes on the lights in the sky. Suddenly, the snow collapsed around her and she was buried up to her arms. She kicked and punched at the snow. That was no use. She churned her little legs as fast as she could, as if to run out of the snow. That only dug her in deeper. Above her, the dancing spirits leapt and spun. Maybe she would be the next one among them, she thought. Oh, she fell back, exhausted. Nibwakan. The snow around her whispered, Be wise. Yes, she must be smart like the fox who thinks his way around a trap. Nibwakan. She lay back to think and felt the snow relax its grip. She lay further back and it let go a little more. Slowly, she wiggled and turned, paddled and swam her way out of the snow. Ho oh, wah! she sang out. Her feet were free. But then, Gawin! Oh no, she cried. Her feet were bare and cold. Her moccasins were gone, buried deep in the drift. She dug in the snow, but it was too soft and loose. She wiped her nose on her sleeve and continued on barefoot. With the very first step, icy crystals cut into her flesh. Her feet began to bleed. In every footstep, bright red drops of blood mingled with the white snow. Still, she stumbled ahead until dawn. When she reached the edge of her village, there she called out before sinking into the snow. The people from her village, even some of the sick ones, ran out when they heard her cry. They carried her back to her lodge and wrapped her swollen and bleeding feet in thick, warm deer skins. Because of the mashkiki, the people were healed. The little girl remained weak for a long, long time, but soon after the snow melted, she too recovered. When the forest turned green, she and her brother went to search for her lost moccasins. What they found there filled them with wonder. On the very spot where she had lost her moccasins and wherever she had stepped with her bleeding feet, beautiful new flowers grew. They were pink and white and shaped just like the little moccasins the girl had worn on her journey. 
The Ojibwe people named the new flower Makisin Wabigwan, which means the moccasin flower. Today it is also called the lady slipper. The people gave the little girl her name too, Waone, or little flower. Because although she was as strong as a bear, fast as a rabbit, and smart as a fox, she was also as lovely and rare as a wild spring flower. Thank you for joining me here today at the Huron County Nature Center. I hope you enjoyed the Ojibwe legend of the Lady Slipper retold by Ms. Larson. Please look for more videos from the Detroit Children's Museum. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.